I can tell you something about this stadium. This is the place where the magic happens. The Champions League finals played here and was about 12 years ago that I watched a match of the Champions League final. And that match was Real Madrid against the Graafschap. The match was so intense and at the end of the match, the Graafschap lost the match with two to one. Uh, they did become three-time champion, but unfortunately they lost the Champions League final. But it was a great result from a club from a small city of Doetinchem. It was with football manager. Um, I managed a team from the first division to the head league and ultimately made it to the Champions League and became one of the best coaches in the world with the game. Um, unfortunately for me it was a game, but I saw the potential of what um, scouting could how scouting could help football clubs. I'm going to tell you something about the transfer policy of football clubs. This is the first transfer that was ever done by between football clubs. Will Gross, Gross was sold for $100 to Alston Villa in 1893. In the first beginning, football clubs were buying players from their own country. Then they traveled through Europe, then they tra traveled through the world, and eventually that was 2000. From then, we're gonna go into a new era. Also, when you look at the price, it's like a logarithmic scale. Um, only 20 years ago, one of the best Dutch players ever, Dennis Bergkamp, was sold for not even 10 million euros. And for that price, um, even mediocre players got sold now. But my passion was about data and football. I went to the University of Twente to study industrial engineering, and I saw um, what the potential could be of data. How did I saw that? That was Bill James. Bill James invented sabermetrics. Sabermetrics is a way of using math into sports. He introduced it to baseball, where he uh, managed um, with Billy Bean of the Oakland Athletics to get a fine result, and the Oakland Athletics almost won the championship by using data. What was the problem for football? If you transform um, the same metrics to football or moneyball to football, you would only get corners because it's a static game. If you compare home baseball to football, it's just like taking corners all over the time. So you can't analyze um, the same way. Um, I did my bachelor thesis at one of the best clubs in the Netherlands. And when I was there, I saw that the professor I was, talk I was talking with, he didn't even saw the World Cup final in which the Netherlands played. And on the other side was a football scout, which didn't finish his high school. So it was, the scout was talking about, that he has to be right in his head. And the professor was talking about fuzzy logic. And so there was a lot of, uh, they couldn't understand each other, both ways. Um, the one was talking math and the other one thought it was Chinese. So there was a bit of uh, difficult of understanding. I went to the European Championships, and I was there in the Ukraine with one of my friends, Anatoly Babic. He was studying math at the University of Twente. And when we were there, we were talking about my bachelor thesis, how to improve the transfer market, um, how to uh, improve scouting of football clubs. And we were discussing it there. We thought, well, maybe if we start a company, we can use NASA algorithms. Um, to improve the football market, to improve how teams work together, to improve um, how that there are no more wrong transfers. So we started a company together with Remco van der Veen, the three of us here at the university, and we thought, well, if we use data, we can um, ob objectively scout the players. How can we get the data? Because data is expensive. We have the gambling market. Every year, there was a profit of $30 billion in the gambling market worldwide. Um, to get more money out of the gambling, they generate a lot of data, and they, these data they publish open source. So if you track down all the data they send to your browser and you put it in your own database, you can improve it, um, the way of how to find players. Uh, all these data centers generate the data for you, they send it to your browser, but what they send to your browser, what they show there um, is, um, just a little bit of what they send to your computer. If you track all the data down and use your own algorithms, you can use big data to scout for the potential 
of great football players. This is Mokotjo. Mokotjo was just a regular player for most people in the Netherlands for last year. When you look at his, his data, you see that he was one of the best players. With data, you can objectively select players um, by looking at their key qualities. Why shouldn't you look at goals? Because goals are dependent of the assists. What if you can take out the dependency of other players? What if you check from every shot every player took, you can give him a chance for scoring? If you say a penalty is worth 0.9 goals, you can say if someone didn't score, he loses 0.9 goals for his team. The same you can do for assists. Assists are dependent from the striker. If you keep the dependency out of it, you can objectively select players and determine which key qualities you look for in a player. You don't want a goalkeeper to, um, to be the best scorer of your team because you won't use it for the purpose. Um, Sander Eisma developed a model in which you can easily um, create graphs in which you can compare players with each other. So the scouting developed from going in the country to going in Europe, to going global, to going to data. Nowadays, data is used in almost every football club. Data is used because they saw that a scout can only watch two players per match because he keeps, uh, has to look for them intensively. If you use a scout for like every day, you can, so you can look at most for 700 players in a year. If you use data, you can use, uh, you can view players from all over the world. At this moment, more than 300,000 football players worldwide are being um, managed, being, um, being checked by all the matches they play. All the data they publish online, on social media, on blogs, is being translated by a big algorithm and you can select the best players from there. But then you get the discussion again. What is most important? Is it intuition or is it data? Maybe you can't use one without the other. You can use data to do the first scan, so generate the five potential candidates for a club, but eventually you already always need the use of the, sc uh, the scout, the, the eyes of the beholder, so you can see how, peop how, how a guy is mentally, um, if he's good or not. You can all check it when you see him. This is Franca. Frank was bought for a couple of millions to Hannover Section 90. They bought him and they thought he was 1 meter 90. When he got there, they saw he was 9 centimeters short, but he already signed his contract. So they lost a couple of million. He never played a game for the, for the competition and they lost all the money they spent on him. What do you need if you want to succeed with a new company in a new market to disturb it? You need a clear goal, the spirit to commit and the balls to do it. Thank you. Thank you.